Do you know who Prudence Scandal is? Who? But I don't know that I got all the facts. But I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that Prudence Candles from Connecticut, mm -hmm. and I want to say had something to do with education, mm -hmm. maybe open to school. Yeah, um, for African American. African American. I, I knew she was actually she was yeah. herself African American, right? Prudence Crandall commenced equality in education by being the first person to take a stand towards school-wide integration. It was around the mid-1800s. Times were tough and slavery hadn't even been abolished yet. Cities were dirty and overcrowded, while diseases were being spread across the country. While many Americans accepted these atrocities as a part of life, Prudence Crandall did not. Prudence Crandall was born on September 3, 1803 in Hoppington, Rhode Island. She was born as a Quaker and was raised to value certain seven things. Simplicity, peace, integrity, community, stewardship, service, and most of all, equality. Because she grew up believing in these things and made it all the more easy to accomplish what she did. Public school, and then this would be private school. Wow. Oh my goodness, I turned my phone off. I'm so annoyed. I'm sorry. Can you turn it off? Yeah. After moving to Connecticut at the age of 17, Prudence Crandall purchased the Canterbury Female Boarding School in 1831. A year later, she admitted African American girl Sarah Harris, who wanted to be a teacher similar to Prudence. Since Prudence was a Quaker who believed strongly in equality, this was no big deal. Slavery wasn't abolished until 1865. It wasn't seen too much in the North rather than the South, but community members in Canada The white parents were outraged with this and demanded Sarah Harris be expelled. Crandall, however, opposed slavery and believed in equal rights for all, so she opened a new school for African American girls. An ad in the Liberator, William Lloyd Garrison's newspaper, states it cost $25 per quarter, one half paid in advance. The subjects taught were reading, writing, arithmetic, grammar, geography, history, philosophy, chemistry, astronomy, painting, music, piano, and French. Naturally, Prudence Crandall ignored this new law. She was soon arrested and spent a night in jail. She was put on trial and eventually was released. I think, I think if you needed to boil down the question of what Prudence Crandall's legacy was, it's the reminder that one person truly can make a difference. Um, she was someone that knew in her heart of hearts what was the right thing to do. And despite the social pushback, the, um, the anger that she met, that, w that what she tried to do was met with, that she just kept going in that direction because she knew that it was the right thing to do. I think as another sidebar issue, again with Sarah Harris, her legacy was, was that she was a young woman who had the wherewithal to actually request to enter the academy, mm -hmm. knowing fully well that most within the community would not be supportive of that. Mm -hmm. And I think what's exciting for us is that there are descendants from both the Fairweather family, she married a man by the name of George Fairweather, and then her sister Mary Harris, who also attended the academy, married a man by the name of Pelina Williams. There are descendants of both those lineages that there are, there are many, many people that went into teaching. So I think that's something that through the, the Fairweather and Harrison Williams family, that their legacy was that they took the education that they received here at Canterbury and continued that within their own family tree. Mm -hmm. That was great. She was named Connecticut's state heroine and has 
had a school and a domestic violence help center named after her, in addition to being admitted into the Connecticut Women's Hall of Fame. She left behind a legacy of equal education and the fight for reform while being threatened and punished without giving up, and that is why she was a true leader.